in last class we studied about liberalization policies and then uh, we were discussed about quantitative restriction in that one we studied about some trade policy uh, reforms uh, which are the trade policy reforms first one is dismantling of quantitative restriction means there is no restrictions in quantities of imports and exports okay then next one is reduction of tariff rates means they reduce the import and export tariff rates then removal of licensing procedures for imports for imports they removed the licensing procedures then uh, these were the main policies trade policies uh, trade policy reforms and uh, quantitative restrictions on imports of manufactured consumer goods agricultural products uh, then uh, these things uh, completely removed in april 2001 okay then export duties also have been removed for increasing the competitive positions or of indian goods in the international market okay these are the policies related to liberalization so okay now we can go to privatization then what is privatization according to world bank privatization is the transfer of state owned enterprises to the private sector by sale of going concern or by sale of assets following their liquidation means from public sector this uh, state owned enterprises to the private sector that one is the privatization increasing inefficiency on part of public sector led to the privatization forms of privatization denationalization joint ventures leasing these are the main uh, forms of privatization then then what are the positive effects private companies cut cost and be more efficient then second point increase competition third point more responsive to customer complaints these were the uh, main positive effects of privatization negative effects public service job loss privatization is expensive these were the negative sides of privatization then now we can go to uh, uh, privatization more deeply then government companies are converted into private companies in two ways one or uh, one way is by withdrawal of the government from ownership and management of public sector companies means completely withdraw uh, government partnership from public sector companies or ownership from public sector companies and second uh, second way was by outright sale of public sector companies they started to sold this company to private uh, private sectors or private indi individuals then privatization of the public sector enterprises by selling of part of the equity of public sector enterprises to the public is known as disinvestment means public sector enterprises selling to publics that one is known as disinvestment okay the purpose of this sale according to government was mainly improve financial discipline and for uh, for means increasing the modernization and everything okay it was means improving the efficiency for that purpose only they started this disinvestment then like lot of public sector units they started to sell in uh, in market okay then here you can see about navaratnas and public sector enterprises policies we know uh, what is uh, navaratnas navaratnas means it is nine jewels or uh, it is the uh, in, we know about imperial court of king vikram vikramaditya who were the eminent 
persons of excellence in the field field of art literature knowledge in order to improve the efficiency and profit, professionalism they give one some uh, places like navaratnas like that the government identify public sector enterprises and declare them as Ma maharatnas navaratnas and mini ratnas you can see here Maharatnas means which are the public sector enterprises Indian Oil Corporation Limited, Steel Authority of India, Navarat, uh, Navaratnas means Hindustan Aeronautic Limited, HAL, Mahanagar Telephone Nigam Limited, then uh, Miniratnas means Bharat, BSNL Bharat Sanjar Nigam Limited, Airport Authority of India, then Indian Railway catering and tourism IRCTC these are the main retinas and uh, government classified into different retinas we know many of these uh, public sector enterprises formed during 1950s and 60s when self-reliance was an important public policy that time like this so many companies are started and this uh, granting of status result in better performance of these companies means uh, these companies we know about ILCTC and every companies are performing well okay then that privatization could provide strong impetus to the inflow of foreign direct investment means government understood this privatization can lead to lot of development uh, some public sector unit have been granted special status like Maharatnas, Navaratnas, Miniratnas and government also made a lot of attempt to improve public sector unit uh, giving some uh, modern technology uh, means like that they are they were giving lot of support okay that one is the privatization then in privatization main point is disinvestment that one is the main point then now we can go to globalization globalization implies integration of the economy of the country with the rest of the world economy and opening up of the economy for foreign direct investment by liberalizing the rules and regulations and by creating favorable socio-economic political climate for global business means globalization means it is the integration of the economy of the country with the rest of the world that one is the globalization okay then in uh, globalization what are the features means opening and planning expand business throughout the world buying and selling goods uh, services from any countries in the world means we know IT companies what they are doing they they are buying services from other countries okay erasing difference between domestic market and foreign market locating the production and other physical act active facilities on a consideration of the global business dy dynamics irrespective of national consideration then basic production development basic production development and production planning global market on the global market consideration then we know uh, through global globalization these machineries technologies raw material finance are obtained from the best source from anywhere from the world okay then then this globalization have some positive side free flow of capital and increase in the total capital employed then free flow of technology increase in industrialization we know a uh, lot of uh, advanced technology we can use from other countries uh, spread of production facilities throughout the globe balanced development of world economies then uh, uh, we know some countries are developed some countries are underdeveloped these countries also can improve then increase in job then increase in production and consumption 
then commodities at lower price with high quality means we will get quality product in lower price then higher standard of living these are the positive sides of globalization and what are the negative sides loss of domestic industries exploits of human resource decline in income unemployment increase these are the some negative side of uh, globalization then in globalization we know uh, we understood that globalization means integration of the economy with the world economy that one is the globalization okay globalization attempt to establish links in such a way that they can uh, means okay in globalization important thing is outsource what is outsource this is the one of the important outcomes of globalization in outsourcing a company takes regular service from external source and or mostly from other countries and which was previously provided internally or within the country like legal advice or computer service or advertisement like this services will provide from external sources or from other country that you need outsourcing okay then as a form of economic activity outsourcing we know uh, it companies what they are doing most of the it companies they are doing outsourcing and everything okay in information it means information technology we know voice business voice based business process outsourcing centers okay then record keeping or suppose uh, you are going to a bank this bank what they will do they will that service okay then music recording film editing like that any service they can outsource suppose in our college also students data or so students fees collection that will can out can outsource to another company that one is the outsourcing okay with the help of modern telecommunication links including internet text voice we know mncs are there they are doing this outsourcing services at cheaper cost with uh, reasonable degree of skill and accuracy the low wage rate and availability of skilled manpower in india have made the destination for global outsourcing we know india in india cheap uh, low wage rate is there because of that only you know, this outsourcing companies are coming to india next one is world trade organization and next we can study about world trade organization wto was founded in 1997 1995 as a successor organization to the gart okay general agreement on trade and tariff okay gart was established on 1948 with 23 countries as the global trade organization then uh, then after that Uh, we started as a successor of card we started this wto in 1995 okay then we know multilateral trade agreements are there then this w wto working as a trade organization and they are providing equal opportunities opportunities to all countries then uh, means uh, wto started for like rule based trading regime and uh, its purpose is to enlarge enlarge uh, production and trade service then the wto agreements cover trade in goods as well as service okay then bilateral and multilateral uh, means we know tariff systems are there then uh, non tariff barriers like that some agreements they were started between these member countries as an important member of wto india has been in the front of framing fair global rules regulations and safeguards and advocating 
developing countries okay india has kept the commitment towards liberalization of trade made in the wto by remo removing the quantitative restriction on imports and reducing the tariff rates 